All right. Yeah. Well, I guess we got skunked. That ain't gonna work. Look at how much further out that one is than the other one. But then the 1.9 and the 1.6 are the same, but they're not. So, that's not gonna work. So you can try something else. I wanna try something, I was watching a video and a guy, this is a lot of work to put this together and have it not work. A guy took, primed it and they took this out. And I have the socket now for that. So, hmm. It was on the machine where they, this thing was turning. So anyway, I could try if I prime it here and then take this loose and maybe it, I don't know. Anyway, I also have a seal kit for this one. I can pull the top off of it too and check that. I don't know. Not exciting. Anyway, we'll figure it out. All right, guys, we're going to continue on with this rabbit. Um, I did try the diesel purge in this, and it was unsuccessful. I I'm just realized there's just nothing else I can do but take the pump off and replace it. Um, I do have another pump, so it's just the amount of work that it takes to take that off and everything. When it was running absolutely perfect before I stopped driving it, there was nothing wrong with the engine running. The only reason, one of the reasons I stopped driving it was because of the wiring. The other reason was, is because the timing belt was really old and I wanted to replace that and I just didn't have the time to do that. Along with the wiring, it just sat for a while. And then, of course, the fuel got old that was in the injection pump. The fuel that was in the gas tank seemed okay, but the one, all the stuff that was right in this area, uh, because of the heat, probably uh, just isn't any good anymore so and it's just whatever happened who knows junk must be inside there just from the old fuel tried to get it out of there tried to clean it out tried to blow with the air i tried moving around somebody suggested moving the uh advance for the starting advanced retard or whatever that thing is uh in the back which i don't usually use because it starts up fine usually without it so um, I didn't, I didn't, I moved that around a bunch of times. It worked okay. It seems to go up and down. It didn't start anymore. It didn't do anything as far as make it start. Uh, the reason I never changed this injection pump to the adenoid pump that I have right here is because it was running when I got the engine. When I got this, it was working, working perfectly. So I was like, do I really want to? Do all that work when it's working great and I drove I test drove it with the other injection pump this, this injection pump on it and it was already over fueled and it worked fine it was giving me tons of power I was like eh I'm not gonna bother with that so I still have the adenoid pump this is for my 1.6 so uh, I was gonna take it apart and do something to it I realized that it's no big deal if it just works that's all I'm worried about at this point I just want to get it working make it run and then go from there so anyway update we'll go ahead and remove all this stuff it's kind of a pain with air conditioning but you know it's totally worth it when it's working right so this line's always right in the way and it's looped over this one isn't that great almost be better if it was looped the other way then i could kind of hang it <laughs> over there I don't know if there's any Freon in it right now. Maybe I will just take this off, put it on the other side of this, and then make it so it'll go up there or something, loop around that way, and then loop this one this way, and then be a lot easier to work on. Again, like I said, I didn't like make this thing real pretty because it was a daily driver. It wasn't intended to be any kind of show vehicle or anything like that, or classic looking. It was just driving 
That's it. So what has to come off? The valve cover has to come off to set the timing. Uh, if you guys didn't know, there's no timing mark on these. A lot of people think there's a timing mark on these, but what the cam does is it just spins freely when you take this off. Um, it's like a tapered fit that holds it on. And uh, you have to put a little thing in the cam with the two lobes facing upward. I had to kind of look this stuff up again because I've forgotten. It's been so long. And there's a little cam piece you put in there. And then uh, what it does is when you put the belt on, it actually, the belt tension has somewhat to do with the actual timing, believe it or not. So as you tighten the belt, it rotates this gear. And then when it rotates that gear to a certain point, you lock this down, and that's what determines your timing. So having a Continental belt is really important. You know, I like to use the Continental ones, original one, otherwise it could be out of time. But honestly, it could be slightly out. It's going to run the same. You aren't going to really notice any difference. It just has to be, if it's too too far out, you'll hit the valves, hit the piston. So, yeah, it, it's got to be pretty well right. But I don't know. I've done them before where you just loop it on. You know, use it in the same position. Keep that in the same position and put the belt on and not pull the valve cover. Done that before in a pinch and it works fine. So, but it's not the right way to do it. It should have the valve cover off. Put the, the, uh, it's a little piece of flat metal that fits in the cam. Holds it in place. You have a little barrel that goes inside here and that holds the injection pump in place and then the belt should go on. And then... And I think what it is is because this is under spring load, and, it, and when you tighten that, it actually brings us into center so that the little barrel is in the right place as it slides right in and out easily. And I think that's why they do that that way, but it's kind of weird. It's funky. But that's the way even the new ones are done the same. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and yank off all this junk here, take the pump out, pull the belt, and uh, check the water pump. Uh, probably should replace it, but it, it's always difficult to find the right one. There's like two or three different ones. It has to be the right one. And last time I had a difficulty finding that. So anyway, we'll move on. I'll get this apart and we'll take a look at it. All right, so we got the uh, time belt on. I got the injection pump. This one has the adenoid on it. Uh, that's what I ended up with. It's a brand new bottom but the top is rebuilt it was a little cheaper way to go i guess but we do have the adenoid now so that'll help with when it's got boost it should should help with gas mileage a little bit and get you more more power let's see if it does who knows so i got i got some i primed it with some of this lucas stuff which should help i might Put some down that well actually i won't be able to because uh, you can't get it down that tube unless i just pull the tube off and start shoving fluid in it just something to get it so it's got lubrication is all i'm really worried about it should prime well, let me crank it over for a second and we'll see if it does the way it is timed and the timing's right you have to have the valve cover off put this thing in here and you loosen up the cam and it just spins, okay? It doesn't have a woodruff key in it. That's the way these are made. It's just taper taper fit. And then you set the uh, timing first, and then you do the injection pump timing. And this one's 0.8, which is different than, you know, the old ones I think were one millimeter almost all the time. You said between 0.7 and one millimeter. I used to set them all at one millimeter back in the old days on the 1600s. Um, it gave them a little more power, so anyway. Let's uh, f crank it over and see what happens. Well, after an hour of bleeding lines, I loosen up all the lines and run it, crank it over for a little bit, then t tighten them all up and uh, pushing the fuel up to the thing. Guess what happens? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't start still. <laughs> uh, it's just too cold. Gotta put on the glow plugs again. 
see if I can do this here. Uh, guess. I think I'm on it. I'll probably do it. Let's try it now here. Yeah, it still sounds a little rough. needs to run for a good 20 minutes. That sounds a little different than before, right? Yeah, that sounds like a 1.9, not a 1.6. Alright, so she fires up. That's without the adenoid hooked up too, so... I imagine when I get that hooked up, it's going to be pretty mean. So anyway, I'll get it all hooked up, finish hooking up all this stuff, get the water pump spinning, some coolant in it, and then we're probably not going to do much driving in it until after we paint it. So don't expect to see the driving videos yet. But I'm going to go ahead and get it all buttoned up here, and then uh, we can finish the project here. What a job, boy, I'll tell you what. But you could see right away with this pump on here, just suck the fuel right in. You could just see it just go right in there as soon as I start cranking it. And I've got a return hose right here that's broken. So I'm going to fix that. I don't like the way that's routed. I had to put this down here. Adenoids in a different place. So it, it kind of looks a little cleaner. I mean, none of it looks very clean, really. But anyway, we'll just kind of work with what we got and then I'll get it working and we'll run it a little bit after we can get some coolant in and run it long enough so that all the lifters I can tell one of the lifters is not um, it almost sounds like it has a miss if you noticed it's a little kind of noisy thing but it, it usually did that when I hadn't drove it in a long time and that's just a lifter sticking one of the hydraulic lifters isn't quite not quite ready to go yet so it just takes a little bit of time and we'll get that going and talk to you guys a little bit later. All right, so had some coolant in here. Getting that ready. we we'll change the oil. Oh, something's out there. Got to get some uh, spilled water in there. I use, uh, I always use purified water or distilled water. It makes your radiators last a lot longer. It keeps all that white stuff out of there. I don't know what it's called. I can't remember right now. Anyway, if you want to make your radiator and engine last a lot longer, use distilled water or purified water, one of the two. That's a straight pipe. Um, I think it's two and three quarters inch or something. I can't remember. Pretty good size. There's no turbo lag at all. I still gotta hook up this uh, adenoid thingy. I got some good hose coming for that. I want good hose on that. I think I'll use the diesel hose because uh, down there near the turbo it gets maybe some diesel oil in the sit and uh, from the pressure side of the turbo, so it likes to blow off. So I want to make sure it doesn't blow off. If it blows off, then I don't have any. I don't have any wastegate, so it'll just boost up as much as it can. It'll probably still handle it. I ran up to 14 pounds, but I won't run it there all the time. Um, they say about eight, but I run, I'm running 12. And these things are really tough. They, they put up a lot of abuse. Okay. All 
about ready to go for a drive here pretty soon. Once the only reason I'm not going to go for a drive in it is because uh, the windows aren't in it, and they won't be in it until after it's painted. I want to get this all done and fixed. Then we'll go drive it, maybe before we even buff it or whatever. Then I'll put the dash together. I'm going to redo the whole dash. I've got a whole new dash for it. Um, I'll redo that. And then uh, drive it around a little bit, take some video on it. Find a new home for it. So, I don't need it. It's a neat truck. But... Uh, I did a lot of lots of this engine to make it the worst half. So. Anyway, sound of good. It won't rev any higher. Only goes up to about. 4,000, 3,500 RPM, something like that. That's it. Um, that's it. It's only, this is only like 2,500 or 2,000 RPM rev. Anyway, it's not really, sounds mean, but it's not really uh, revving up real high. So people go, oh, God, you're revving up the rotors, not even hot. It's warmed up enough to rev it up, but it's not that many RPMs. Believe me, it doesn't get a high. So, anyway, we'll go for driving it, you guys. It's it, it's pretty fun. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Stick around for the driving video. Come back for that. Um, it sets you back in your seat pretty good. Let me put it that way. Yeah, it it uh, <laughs> it'll set you back. Uh, I had one guy in here who was over 300, maybe closer to 400 pounds, plus myself. And we were getting on the freeway on an uphill. And uh, I shifted into fifth at 70, I, I don't know, before I even got on the freeway. Um, and once I got on the freeway, I was going pin the speedometer, whatever that is. I don't know. It only takes a few seconds to do. <laughs> it moves out real good. Yeah, people get shocked with the burnouts this thing does. They do. They just don't understand why it can put that much smoke to the ground. It's pretty fun. Okay, looks like she's ready for a road trip. Wish I had a belt. I have a. I have a belt for this. I guess that's okay. It seems like a little tight, but might be all right. Um, oh, I have. I have a cover for it, but I don't know. It doesn't really fit with that mount. I might try to put it on. Just because I, I really don't like this thing being exposed like that. And all it takes is a rag fall in there and it's fragged. Motor's done. So I don't want that to happen. Or a mouse or a rat or something. Rabbit. I've had rabbits in here. So anyway, it's a rabbit with rabbits inside of it. Okay. Anyway, she's getting ready to get some paint on it. Man, it's going to look good too. You'll see. We'll get started on that and uh, get the upholstery done. The upholstery is done, just the just the dash, and then uh, clean it up and put the door panels on. Got new clips for them, uh, so they'll stay in place. I'll probably put some visqueen over the background so they don't get warped again. Little stuff like that. We'll and uh, we'll check it out when it's done. See you guys later. <laughs>